<laughs> God bless you. God bless you. All right. Well, hello everyone. Wow, I'm a little, a little nervous and a lot excited. There's so much emotions happening in me right now. Feels like I want to preach for the first time. <laughs> But what an honor to be here with you all. And uh, Pastor Sansusi, bless you. And Sister Sansusi, God bless you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to minister God's Word. Amen. I don't take it lightly. It's, it's an awesome responsibility. And, um, but I love it when <clears throat> God gives me a word. You know, I w- I've been praying and praying, God, you know, what do you want me to speak on at First Assembly? And He gave me a word for all of you. So I am... I am comfortable with that. I'm thinking, okay, whew, all right, we got, that's it. We got the word. And, um, uh, you know, when I met Pastor Sansusi, I called the church because I wanted to go to church. I was here over the weekend <clears throat> for work. And um, I said, man, I got to go to church. And so I called the church and, um, and I called Pastor. And I go, is this the pastor? He goes, yes, I am. I go, oh, well, God bless you. Okay, well, what time is service? Is it at 10.30? And I think I called him like 10.15 or 10.20 or something like that. And I said, well, I miss, I miss service, man, 10.30. And uh, you know, he goes, you want to come? I, I said, yeah, I'd love to come, but it's already late. And, you know, no, no, we'll pick you up. What? <laughs> now, mind you, I'm, I'm still laying in bed. <laughs> you know, and, and um, I'll send the, the, the driver right over. No worries. I said, sir, no, no, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm already late and I don't want to. Uh, you know, uh, ask the driver to come and miss service, especially worship service. I mean, I think that's one of the most important parts, you know, to, you know, not only the word, but spend time with God in worship. So, no, I don't want to do that to that driver. No, no, he does it all the time. So, he'll go pick up somebody. So, uh, where's the driver, Brother Rick? Where's Brother Rick? God bless you. So, where is he at? Oh, man, I tell you, what a blessing he was. And then, you know what? He picked me up with a smile, too, you know, and I was so thankful. I mean, I, he didn't do one of these, you know, Wish worship service. What's wrong with you? You know, so I was so I was so grateful. And brother Rick, thank you so much. What a blessing, and uh, and what a blessing this has been. And uh, came to one of the uh, uh, prayer day services with uh, Mary, Sister Mary. Also, she was here, and Pastor myself, and and uh, we were all just praying here and uh, praising God. Amen. So you can be blessed, and we can be blessed. And so I, I've, I've prayed already through all these pews and, and chairs. I mean, Mary, we're going all through it. And so, amen. So if you're feeling blessed, it's from somebody's praying. Amen. Thank the Lord. But um, I have also a guest. I invited somebody. And uh, I see she's here. And that's uh, Leslie. Amen. Right? I say your name right? Right. She's, she works in the front desk at the hotel I work at. Did you come by yourself or... You did? Here, we got a VIP section. Come on over here, Leslie. Second, second. <laughs> all right, all right. Amen. So uh, I'm staying at one of the hotels nearby, and she works there, and I invite her, and she goes, you know what? I always think I need to get, go to church. I need to go. I'll, I'll go. Yes, are you going to be there? Yeah. And then so we faced, you know, we made the contract, fist pump, right? <laughs> we made the con- contract. Okay. Fist pump, and she says she's coming. I'm glo- so glad she hear you're here. God bless you, Sister Leslie. Amen. Will you welcome her? First time, Leslie. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And just so you know, get on the record, okay? Because I know some evangelists have some bad rap. Have you ever seen women come into my room? Thank you. Hallelujah to glory to God. <laughs> Nobody there asking. I guess nowadays you got to say men too and all that stuff, but I'm still thinking, amen. <laughs> but, uh, but thank God, uh, I, I love the Lord. And so if you're wondering, okay, what about this guy? Who is this guy? Okay, so I'm a, I'm a little bit of a, a Spaniard, okay, a little bit of Spaniard in me, a little bit of French, wee oui, wee. Oui. And uh, anybody French in here? Yeah. Man, we're like relatives already. So, yeah. And I'm a little bit of a... Uh, a little French, a little Spaniard, a little American Indian. <clears throat> Any American Indians in here? All right, all right. Family. And uh, a little crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh man, we're really family. <laughs> we're really family. 
<laughs> yeah, a pastor over here, he's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? A lot of Jesus. Amen. I, I love the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Lord has given me a word for you all today. And um, will you all stand at this time? <clears throat> it's found in Mark 4. Mark 4, uh, starting at the 35th verse. Amen. And it reads this way. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us go over unto the other side. Everyone say, Let us pass over, pass over. To, the to the other side. Let us pass over, pass over. To, the other side. to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. Everyone say, Great storm. Great storm great storm of wind and the waves and, the, and, and it beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow and they awake him and said master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea peace he said to the sea peace and be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm Hallelujah. Will you close your eyes for one moment? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Lord, you are wonderful and altogether beautiful. Hallelujah. Lord, you are altogether lovely. My God, my God. So, Father, I pray that you prepare the hearts. You prepare our souls, our minds. My God, for your glory, for your word. My God, for your miracle working power. My God, to work in us and through us, Lord. Father, today I believe there will be deliverance, there will be healing, there will be answers. My God, hallelujah, there will be a peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, there will be people saved today. So Father, we thank you right now, we praise you right now for your glory and for what you're going to do in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone, if you would, before you sit down, just close your eyes. And I want you to think about a storm that you may be going through or someone going through. And I want you to see that storm in your life or that loved one's life gone. I want you to see it gone. I want you to see peace in your situation. Peace in your home. Hallelujah. Peace. Hallelujah to whatever you're going through. And I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I speak peace into the storm. And just say, thank you, Lord. Now, if you have a Bible in your hand, I want you to put it down. If you have a purse or a comb, whatever you have, I want you to put it down right now. Just put down whatever is in your hand right now. And now, I want you to give the best hand clap, the best praise that you have, you can and muster up in you right now to the Lord on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory! Thank you, God! Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you! Woo! Thank you for the peace in the storm. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the glory. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Shout thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful, Lord. You are excellent, God. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Man, this is a church that's alive. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give honor to also your assistant pastor, uh, Pastor Miller. What an, uh, well, the first day I came, he, he preached on, uh, uh, on the, the rains. Amen. What a beautiful illustration, beautiful message. It just really blessed me. Amen. And to the uh, praise team, what a, uh, let's give a nice round big applause for the praise team. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> 
you're all anointed. You can feel the presence. You can feel the love. Hallelujah. You have to worship God, and I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get to the word. Somebody say, preach the word. Preach the word. I think I will. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So we started off at Mark 4th chapter, 35th verse, and it says, And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And our, this is a journey that we're on here, each and every one of us. We are on a journey, and the Lord has called you in that journey. And the Lord is telling us to go from A to B in our lives. And this is exactly what he was telling the disciples. He said, okay, well, let us pass over to the other side. And what begins to happen is, okay, the disciples are all great, man. They're probably all excited. What a beautiful day. And man, let us cross to the other side. And so now they begin their journey. They get on the boat and they begin to cross on the other side. Just taking a regular journey. Just going from one side to the other side. They're passing on to the other side. They're walking and believing and trusting Jesus. So here they go. They're going on, to, on their business. Going on the lake. And suddenly. Suddenly. Everyone say suddenly. They rose a great storm in our journey. In our journey, there will come storms that begin to attack our household, begin to attack us personally. We didn't expect it. Everything was wonderful and beautiful. And all of a sudden, we get a phone call. And you're this, and all of a sudden, you're, you're this. A simple phone call, a simple text, a simple visit can change your life. We hear about uh, Brother Larry. Is that correct, Brother Larry? And we're going to pray for a miracle for him today. We're going to expect a, a miracle for Brother Larry today. So there is a storm beginning to, to arise, and everything was lovely, everything was beautiful. I want you to understand that these men were sailors. They were fishermen. They understood from children. As a child, they grew up in this. The, the, the fishermen, the lake, and the storms, they understood the weather. They understood the weather patterns. And, and they didn't see it coming. Storms in our lives, you don't see it coming. And especially Christians. Why? Because we have another enemy. Our enemy of our souls. What's his name? Satan. Satan Lucifer. The old slow food. The dragon. The devil. He'll raise up his ugly head and try to raise a storm against us. To try to destroy the plan that God has in us. But I want you to know that every storm that arises in our lives, God sees it. God sees the storms that will arise in our lives. Cancer, diabetes, back. Problems, headaches, migraine, headaches, this, that, this, and the other, death. God sees the storm before it comes. Yet he says, pass on over to the other side. So we are on this journey. The journey is planned out. Your journey is planned out. Do you know the word says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? That's what the word says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Okay, that includes women, right? Amen, you all know that. Do you know God will allow us to go through storms? He will allow us to go through storms. He ordered it. He ordered for us to go through the storm. Lord, how can this happen to me? What have I done? What did I do? Why do I deserve this? And we see in the word that arose a great storm in verse 37 of wind and waves that beat into the ship so that it was now full. The ship was full, full of trials, full of storms, full of disaster, full, full, full of problems. 
Our lives become that way. It's like, man, somebody begins to drop just problems, problems, one thing after the other, one thing after the other, one, one storm after the other. It just seems all to bundle up at one time. When everything was going great, when everything was going beautiful. It says it beats and beats and beats. And the disciples, they go and look for Jesus. You know what? In a storm, you need to look for Jesus. That, that, that wave, so that storm, the darkness that begins to happen, the, the more light. It's like you don't know when the next day is. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of storm where you don't even know what day it is. It just like seems like everything was one big day. I've been in that kind of storm. When it was day, you wish it was night. You wish it was night, you wish you'd never wake up till the storm is over. I've been in that kind of storm. It beats into your family, it, it, it beats into your life, it beats into your flesh, bleats into your emotions. It beats, 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 and beats. In your home and your and your ship. The word of God says that Jesus was asleep in the ship. Jesus is there in your ship. Whatever situation you're in, whatever problem you're in, Jesus is in the ship. He didn't stay on the other side saying, okay, well, well, we'll see you guys. Adios. <laughs> Adios. I see you on the other side. Go. No, he's in the storm with you. He's in the ship with you. He, had, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody ought to clap your hands to that right now. Amen. Through the storm, Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He's in the storm with you. you. Just, just nudge your partner. Tell him, hey, the, he's with you in the storm. You nudge him back. Say, that's right. He's with you in the storm. Sometimes in storms, we forget that Jesus does exist. And that Jesus is a worker of miracles. And he's a healer and a deliverer. Hallelujah. When this poor man cries out, hallelujah, God will answer him through all his trials and deliver him. God will deliver you through all your trials, all your troubles. Hallelujah. You just got to keep your eye on. Keep your eye on. Keep your eye on Jesus. Don't forget that he's in the ship with you. And the disciples come, Jesus, 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 don't you care, Jesus? J Jesus, don't you care? <laughs> Jesus, don't you care? Don't you see what's happening? We are professionals, Jesus. I'm a professional fisherman. And this, in this test, and in these storms, there's too much, we're going to die. Don't you care that we perish? Don't, don't you care? Don't, don't you care? Don't you care? And sometimes through the storms, we say that we, we think that Jesus has left us and that he doesn't care. Jesus cares about you. Jesus cares about what you're going through. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Jesus cares about your trials. Cares about your storms. Cares about you. Jesus! Don't you care, Jesus, that we're going to bury? Don't you see Jesus, what's going on? Don't you understand what's happening here? Jesus, where are you? When I need you, don't you care? Don't you care? Don't you care? Don't, don't you care? Don't you care that we're going to perish? Perish, Jesus. Jesus gets up. Ah. 
All right, what, what's going on now? Jesus, don't you understand? There's a water getting in our ship. Our household is going down. It's going, don't you care? All these things happening. And guess what Jesus says? Why are you so fearful? Awa. Die. Morir zero, no more. Adios, amigos. Don't you understand, Jesus? We, we can die. I mean, we're about to die, and now we're supposed to continue on what you're doing. Jesus says, why are you so fearful? And that's one of the things that God wants to speak, uh, speak to us about. Fear. Everyone say fear. fear. God is saying, why are you so fearful? To this congregation, God is saying, why? And to our visitors and to all that are coming today and, and under those who are under my voice today from live streaming, why are you so fearful? If you have Jesus in your life, you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you call on, on Jesus, why are you so fearful? What kind of fear has a grip on you? What kind of fear that Jesus can't stomp on? There are many, many fears. People fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear of open spaces, fear of crowded spaces, fear of small spaces, fear of dogs, fear of thunder, fear of lightning, closets, rooms, flying, fear of flying, fear, fear of crashing, fear of holes, cancer, death, public speaking, being alone, failure, fear of success, fear of birds, fear of chickens, don't be a chicken, fear of crowds, fear of witches, or warlocks, and witchcraft, fear of marriage, fear of children, fear of divorce, fear of love, fear of intimacy, fear of commitment, fear of, fear of touch, fear of having a good time, fear of silence, fear of dark, fear of terrorism, fear of needles, Fear of weird people. <laughs> fear of water. Fear of baptism. Fear of uh, abandonment. Fear of rejection. Fear of blood. Fear of long words. Fear of difficult words. Fear of the unknown. Fear of driving. Fear of falling. Fear of church. Fear of pastors and ministers and evangelists. Fear of authority. Fear of God. Fear of cats. Fear of, this is a space you can just fill in. Fear of opinions, fear of Halloween, fear of hell, fear of horror, fear of scary movies, fear of losing your salvation, fear of getting rid of stuff, fear of numbers, fear of rain, fear of bad weather, fear of drowning, fear of roller coasters, fear of the ocean, fear of worms, fear of zombies. Fear of the walking dead. Fear of events, fear of being buried alive, fear of the Holy Ghost, fear of joy, fear of happiness, fear of blessings, fear of losing, fear of war, fear of fear. Fear of working. Dramatic pause here. <laughs> Sisters, young ladies, if you run into a man who is not working, who fears work, Continue on to the other side. Fear of balloons, fear of men, fear of women, fear of the number 13, fear of the number 666, fear of cracks. You ever play that game? Don't step out on a crack, break your mother's brack. Fear of vomiting, fear of bridges, fear of bugs, insects, and butterflies, fear of everything. Fear of Friday the 13th, fear of bearded people, fear of scare That's why, brother. They don't give you hugs around here. Shake your hands, there, Brother Rick. <sighs> fear of beautiful people. Fear of ski masks. Fear of sleep. Fear of getting raped. Fear of fire. Fear of frogs. Fear of sharks. Fear of being forgotten. Fear of being alone. Fear of cockroaches. Fear of doctors. Fear of dentists. Fear of dolls. Fear of puppets. Fear of fish. 
Fear of midgets, fear of skin color, fear of cultures, fear of moths, fear of animals, fear of crime, food, ghosts, demons, horses, mice, mirrors, pain, pregnancy, fear of your father, fear of your mother, fear of being beat up, talking over the phone. Ah. Fear of conflict, fear of being too fat, fear of being too skinny, fear of choke, fear of death, fear of coffins, fear of funerals, cemeteries, heights, the freeway, getting old, hospitals, loud noises, fear of school, fear of tests, fear of technology, fear of the future, fear of, yeah, I said that one, fear of work, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, say it again, fear of clowns, and fear of fear. So there are many fears. If I mentioned one of them, that or some of them, that you are struggling with, that is one of your storms that God wants to deliver you from today. <laughs> he wants to deliver you from all your fears because the Word of God says, God, and, and, and 2 Timothy 1.7, for God had not given us the spirit of God has not given us the spirit of fear. You know, and I love what the word does. The next one he says on the word, it says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. You see, because when fear comes against you, you got to answer it with power. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We should all be gifted with a sound mind, a mind of peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because in Jesus Christ, there is peace. In Jesus Christ, there is love. In Jesus Christ, there is joy. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, there is a resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, hallelujah, your troubles seem to cease. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Whatever your dead situation is, the, the Jesus I know, he's into resurrections. Hallelujah. Your dead situation can turn into a, a resurrection situation. Hallelujah. Whatever was dead before, hallelujah, that was beautiful, that was lovely, that was a blessing. Hallelujah. God is a resurrection, has the resurrection power. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the disciples come and say, Master, don't you care that we perish? Why? Why is it that you're so fearful? The next question he asks. Why is it that you have no faith? Why is it that you have no faith? Where did you leave your faith? Did you not see me feed the 5,000, the 3,000? Did you not see me raise the dead? Did you not see me? Hallelujah. The blind eyes to see, the deaf ears to hear. Did you not see me? Did you not see the miracles that I've done? Did you not hear the word, hallelujah, that was foretold of me? The blind shall see, hallelujah, the dead shall be raised, the deaf ears shall open, hallelujah, and the lame, hallelujah, should jump like deers. Did you not hear the promise of the word that I've given you? Why and where is your faith? Where is your faith? Come, come. Brother, come, 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 come here, come here. Man, I saw him last week. I love his socks. I don't know if you ever see his socks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just tied up. This man knows how to dress. What's your name, brother? Bob. Brother Bob. It's like, where did we leave that faith? I want to face the jacket here, so let me see your jacket. Is, maybe you left it in the dad jacket, Pastor Bob. That, that, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. We, where, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so where's that faith? It's underneath the tie. Perhaps you left it in your shoes by the ball. Oh, perhaps you let me see the shoes. Why don't you have a seat it down? So let's see if we lift the shoes there. We can really see the socks. <laughs> let's see, brother Bob. Let's see where did we leave that faith here? Man, let's see. Woo wee! 
All right. All right. Let's see this, Bobby Bob here. Oh, caramba, where did we leave that faith? faith. Where did we leave that faith? Well, just stay right there, Brother Bob. Just stay right there. So Jesus said, where is your faith? Where's your, where, where did you leave your faith? Did you leave it on the pillow this morning? Where, where did, you, did you leave it at your job while you and your boss were arguing? Where did you leave your, where did you set it aside? Where, where is your faith? Jesus asking, where is your faith, disciples? Man, we're about to perish, Jesus. No, no, but where is your faith? We're about to die, Jesus. Where is your faith? They're about to... Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Did you leave? Did you leave? Did you leave your faith in your last storm? Did you leave your faith in the last trial? Did you leave your faith with a last argument with your spouse? Did you leave your faith when that child backslid, came against you? Did you leave your faith when you were trespassed against? Where did you leave your faith? Jesus is asking, Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? The faith that you sing about, that you praise about, the faith that you, when you raise your hands and worship me, where's that faith? Faith cometh by what? Hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's why we have to renew our minds with the word of God. Hallelujah, renew, renew. When, when the devil says this, we answer it. No. Oh. When this devil says you'll never be healed, you said, by his stripes I am healed. When the devil says, fall down and worship me and I'll give you this and that, you said, get thee behind me, Satan. When the devil comes to you and I said, I'll take your family, I'll take your money, I'll take everything away from you, I will destroy your ship. You answer back and say, I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. What is a more than a conqueror? Let me tell you who a more than a conqueror is. David, when he faced Goliath. And Goliath was huge. Big. Come here, man. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stand over there. Stand up there. Goliath was huge. <laughs> At nine feet tall and 600 pounds, Goliath. Man of war, the atomic bomb of the Middle East. And little David. <laughs> little scroungy. <laughs> Wearing some comeback boots. <laughs> Only weighing at 10 pounds. Faces Goliath. You know, David, the Bible says, the Bible says, when David was facing Goliath, and the whole army of Israel was frightened and hiding away, and here's David, only uh, attending sheep. He is not a professional uh, 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 Green Beret uh, 16 member. Just a scrowny. Looks kind of scrowny. Go, look at a scrown face. Show a scrown. Let me give you your best scrown face. I can't. A scrowny 10 pounds. David, being a young man, was full of faith. The whole army. Can you imagine the army of America just hiding from one of these little armies coming by? Just, just, the whole army was... <laughs> Hiding. 
But David, he had his mind renewed with the word of God. He, he spent time with God in worship and praise and singing unto the Lord. He spent time that his spirit, his mind can be renewed in Christ. He spent time in the word. He spent time in the presence of God. He spent time of singing and worshiping and glorifying God out there in the wilderness. So there was a faith built up in David that the army did, of Israel did not have. And it was powerful. And it was awesome. When he saw that Goliath, he oh my, look how tall he is. Look how ugly he is with glasses. <laughs> you like that one, huh? <laughs> you want to say something else about him? Uh... No? Okay. So here's David. David did not take David did not take the commander's high-tech equipment. He did not talk, he didn't take his, his brace plate, he didn't take his sword, he didn't take his helmet, he didn't take the king's best. He did, take not, did not take his best. All he took was the name of his God. All he took was the word of God. All he took, hallelujah, what God has given him. Whatever you have in the fight, that's enough. Come on, you get that? Whatever you have, whatever faith you have for that storm, for that Goliath, whatever faith you have, it is enough. Yeah, I'm going to chew on that a little bit. Chew on that a little bit. Well, I don't have the faith of... <laughs> Pastor San Susi, he's been here for 49 years and he's been saved. And I don't have pretty socks like Pastor Bob. <laughs> Brother Bob, ooh, Pastor, oh, Pastor, I don't know if I'm prophesying or not, but hey. <laughs> but what you do have, Moses, Moses, I'm going to deliver your people, Lord, millions of people. How am I going to deliver them? There are no army. What is in your hand? Oh. This is my staff, my, my stick. That's enough. Whatever you have in your hand, in your pocket, for the Lord, it's enough. Whatever you have in your hand, in your pocket, whatever you have with you, it is enough to send an army running, to lead millions out of Egypt. Hallelujah. If all you have is a hallelujah and your breath, then that's what you're going to say until deliverance comes. You keep on saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My child's going to be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My mortgage will be paid. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will be healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If all you have, oh, I'm starting to feel the anointing. Hallelujah. If all you have is the name of Jesus, if that's all you have, if you're broke, you have no coat. Hallelujah. If you're broke, hallelujah, you don't even have some sense in your pocket. Hallelujah. Or in your mind. Hallelujah. But if you have Jesus, that's all you have to do is call on Jesus. Come on, say that name. One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. That's all you got to say is the name of Jesus. Will you stand up and clap your hands to the name of Jesus? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Glory. Yeah. Woo. Come on, come on, come on. Shout that name, Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Come on, come on, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, when David found out that Goliath was cursing his God, he didn't hide out. He began to run to the fight. He ran to the fight. Slur, wham! All right, come on, go cut his head off. Go cut his head off. Go cut his head off. Wham! Come on. 
Way to go, David. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap your hands one more time. When the Bible says we are more than conquerors, he will allow us to kill our enemy like Goliath. But when we are more than conquerors, we get the enemy's own weapon and use it against him and cut off his head. Hallelujah. We're more than conquerors, church. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Hallelujah. When fear comes knocking at your door, you answer it with faith. And there will be no more fear. Hallelujah. 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 For God had not sent the spirit of fear, but of power to his people. Hallelujah. But love. Hallelujah. And a sound mind. Hallelujah. So when you come against your storm, you answer it by faith. You read that word. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important to read your word, to memorize the word, that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I said we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ that is in you, he is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. When you need that hope of glory, you call on that Jesus that's in you. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Spirit for this fight that we are in. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will take us into another level. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to fill us and renew us and strengthen us and, and, and begin to change our mind and begin to change our mindset. Hallelujah. That we are more than conquerors in faith hallelujah through jesus christ church we need the holy ghost like never before hallelujah visitors you need the holy ghost like never before hallelujah if you're just sitting around and not just coming to church and you don't know about the holy spirit you can have the holy spirit today we can pray for you today hallelujah the bible says hallelujah the out of your belly shall flow rivers Whew. somebody say rivers Rivers of living water. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word tells us, hallelujah, that these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. There's going to be a, a new language, a language, what we call a language of heaven, a language of fire, hallelujah, a language of faith and power, hallelujah. That's why we have to pray without ceasing, praying in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. we got to begin to pray, Lord, without ceasing, church. That's why on Tuesdays, hallelujah, hallelujah, you got to come to prayer if you can come to prayer. On Friday night, you got to come to prayer when you can come to prayer. Hallelujah. There should be more in prayer time than there is on Sunday time. Let me tell you something. Without praying, hallelujah, without the Holy Ghost, without praying, having a relationship with God, we're not going to make it. It's those that have that intimacy with God is going to make it. There were the five foolish virgins and five wise ones. The foolish ones didn't have that relationship. Jesus said, I never knew you. The wise ones had their oil, uh, their vessels uh, uh, filled with oil and had extra vessels. And they had their lamp filled with oil. That oil represents the Holy Spirit. We need that Holy Spirit. And your faith will go into another level. Your promises will go into another level. You will have a relationship with God that's into another level. Hallelujah. A, a level of intimacy. A, a level of glory. You shouldn't only feel the presence of God in church. You should be feeling the presence of God at home. In your bedroom. At your workshop. At your school. Hallelujah. Young people stand up for Jesus at school. Begin to pray with people at school, young people. You see someone blind or has this, just say, hey, can I pray with you? Give me your hand. Can I pray with you? Whatever they're going through. What? You're, oh, your mom and dad going through a divorce in the name of Jesus. Lord, save them. Turn it around in Jesus' name and help my friend in Jesus' name. 
You what? They found cancer in you. What? They did this in you. Let me pray. I rebuke that cancer. I rebuke that diabetes. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave, Lord, and show them how great you are and show them how real you are. Yes. Young people, don't be, be afraid of, to, to, to stand up for the Lord and to pray for your, your classmates and pray for your teacher. Oh, I have the answer, uh, teacher. Jesus. Well, I don't believe in Jesus. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you should. You're a teacher. Stand up. Hallelujah. He'll fight your battles for you. God is a healer, a deliverer, a savior, a praying, answering God. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Do you serve him? Will you worship him like never before? Come on, will you stand up one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just praise God for one more moment. Hallelujah. The best praise you can give, church, to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Pray for someone to be saved today. Pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. Pray for someone to have the receive their miracle today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all close your eyes at this time. Just pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my shortcomings. Jesus, today I let go of all the fears in my life from my youth up. Lord Jesus, I bring you the fears of my family, of my family before me. My fathers and mothers before me. I bring you that fear. I nail all fear to the cross to be covered by your blood. Lord Jesus, I let go right now by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I let it go. I renounce it from my life. And I command it to leave me now in Jesus' name. Now clap your hands and believe it. Woo! Hey! Hey! Jesus! Woo! Continue on the prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins and all my shortcomings. Lord Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your unconditional love for me. Lord, I forgive myself of all the sins and all the shortcomings in my life. I let go of all the guilt from my youth up. And I nail it to the cross. To be covered by your blood. Lord Jesus, I let all guilt go. Now, in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I let go all the shame in my life. Lord, I let go of all the shame in my life. For my youth up. I renounce it. For my soul. My mind. My spirit. My body. And I nail it to the cross. To be covered by your blood. I let it go now. In Jesus name. Lord thank you. For forgiveness. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me from all my trials, from all my troubles. I thank you, Jesus, for you are the answer 
to all in Jesus name now clap your hands unto God and take up God hallelujah come on ministers let's pray with these people hallelujah find out what their need is hallelujah.